Number 5. The Cavern of Lost Souls A tiny village in Wales kept a dirty secret for years. A group of urban explorers were exploring a site near McKinleth, Wales called the Cavern of Lost Souls when they made a fascinating but terrifying discovery. About 100 rusted cars piled on top of each other were visible thanks to the sunlight barely creeping into the cavern. The site where the explorers spotted the cars was actually once a slate mine that opened around 1812 and closed in the 1960s. Not only were there cars, but refrigerators, televisions, and other junk were all left there. Some of the locals admitted that the site was an illegal dumping area. Apparently, one of the cars had tags on it that were about 50 years old. The Cavern of Lost Souls is often described as a deeply flooded mine, and it's not easy to access. Explorers have to repel almost five stories to get to a tight tunnel that goes 20 feet down to the cavern floor. Once they're down there, they're in a place where the only source of light enters from the top of the cavern. It's truly a sight to behold. One man who explored the area said, Once your eyes adjust to the sudden beam of light, you realize the sheer scale of the place. There are hundreds of cars on top of each other. Sadly, other urban explorers have entered the Cavern of Lost Souls and damaged the area by knocking things over and drawing graffiti on the cavern's walls. Number 4. The Google Earth Incident Google Earth is an incredibly useful tool. You can check out a town or a faraway country without ever leaving home. That's what Brian Martin, a Wellington, Florida resident, was doing in the summer of 2019. Martin was just being curious on Google Earth, checking out his old neighborhood when he discovered something strange. A white object caught his eye in the pond behind the home he was looking at. Upon further review, Martin realized it was a car. Martin called his ex-wife, who still lived in the house. She was able to get in touch with her neighbor for help. The neighbor then used a drone to get a better look at the pond and also spotted the car. With that, the police were called to the scene. They removed the car and were shocked by what was inside. They discovered human remains. The car's details revealed that it belonged to William Earl Moult. Moult was a 40-year-old mortgage broker that was basically a loner who rarely drank. He went missing on November 7, 1997 in Wellington. He'd gone out to a local club but never came back home. His disappearance stumped law enforcement for years. Eventually, his family and friends accepted the fact that he was gone. Many questions still remain, though, even with the discovery of his remains. It's uncertain how and why Mould perished. One theory is that Mould could have lost control of his car on the road near the pond and crashed. Those who saw Mould the night he went missing said they believed that he wasn't drunk. It's even more baffling that no one in the neighborhood heard anything the night he crashed his car. The strangest part of the mystery is that the Google Earth image was taken back in 2007, and for over 10 years, no one saw Moult's car in the pond. If it wasn't for the curiosity of Brian Martin, Moult's car and remains may have never been discovered. Have you ever discovered something weird on Google Earth? Let us know in the comments down below and subscribe if you're enjoying the video so far. Number 3. The Yuba County Five it was Friday, February 24th, 1978, when five men left Yuba County, California to go and see a college basketball game in Chico, California. Ted Weyer, Jack Madruga, Bill Sterling, Jackie Hewitt, and Gary Mathias were five friends that played for an adult Special Olympics team. They were huge fans of UC Davis, and they had an away game that night at Chico State University. The men had an important Special Olympics basketball tournament the next day, so going to the UC Davis game served as a bit of motivation. Four of the men had intellectual disabilities while Matthias had been diagnosed with schizophrenia. It's important to note that Matthias had been doing pretty well on a medication regimen for his schizophrenia. Also, the group had made several successful trips out of town together in the past before this incident. After the game, they left Chico State and stopped by a local convenience store to grab some snacks. Jack Madruga drove the five in his 1969 Mercury Montego. They were supposed to take a state highway directly home, and Madruga was known for being a very reliable and responsible driver. Also, the five men were told to inform their families if they were running late 
or if any plans had changed. But something strange happened on February 24, 1978. The men never returned home. Their parents spent the night of February 24th and the early hours of the 25th worrying about their sons. One of the parents reported them missing to the authorities the next day. Four days after they disappeared, the 1969 Montego was spotted in an abandoned snow-covered road in the Plumas National Forest. The car was 70 miles in the wrong direction in a forest in the Sierra Nevada mountains. Also, the car was on a remote road that led nowhere. The Montego appeared to have gotten stuck in the snow, but the men could have pushed the car out if they tried. Also, temperatures were freezing in the Plumas that night. None of the men were wearing proper clothing for the environment since they lived in the much warmer Yuba County area. Those investigating the scene didn't know if the men vanished into the Plumas or if someone had driven the car and abandoned the vehicle. A massive manhunt was immediately launched and four of the five's remains were later discovered in June of 1978. Ted Weher's remains were in a U.S. Forest Service trailer that was about 12 miles from where the Mercury Montego was left. The trailer was stocked with military sea ration cans and about 30 cans had been opened. A candle had also been lit at one time, but no one ever turned on the gas to heat the trailer. The remains of Jack Madruga, Bill Sterling, and Jackie Hewitt were near the trailer. Law enforcement and the families were amazed the men had walked so far from the car. Sadly, they walked 12 miles up the road instead of 12 miles down to safety. Law enforcement to this day has no idea why the five took a drive into the Plumas National Forest. Jack Madruga was not known to make spontaneous journeys, and the men really needed their rest for the upcoming basketball tournament. Some family members and people who have researched the disappearance believe something sinister happened that night. It's rumored that the five were somehow brought to the Plumas National Forest against their will, or tricked to go to the spot they vanished. These are all just theories, though. Even more strange is the fact that a man claimed to see the men on the abandoned road. The witness, Joseph Shawns, was also stuck near where the Montego was abandoned. Shawns claimed that he saw another car following the men on the road where they left the car. What was Shawns doing at that location? His stories vary, but he claimed he wanted to check the snow line in the Plumas where his car got caught in the snow. He tried pushing it out, but reportedly suffered a small heart attack. He ended up having to make an agonizing eight-mile walk to an inn or tavern for help, but he made no mention of the men who vanished that night. Sadly, the remains of Gary Mathias were never located, and it's believed he died with the others in the Plumas National Forest. The Yuba County Five mystery has baffled authorities for over 45 years. Number 2. The 1994 MIT Hack Students at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, or MIT, are well known for their epic hacks. These hacks are actually just pranks that are deemed next level since they're not just creative but complex. One hack that stands out is from 1994, when a police car was left in an unusual spot. On the morning of May 9, 1994, a campus police car was discovered on top of the Great Dome which is located at Building 10 on campus. The car was admired by many as it had police lights still flashing. People were in awe and shocked. Exactly how did a 3,000-pound car get on top of the dome? How did this happen without anyone noticing? When the police car was examined, it was nothing more than parts for a Chevy Cavalier attached to a wooden frame. A dummy was even discovered inside the car dressed up like a police officer. The prank was eventually taken down but remained legendary. Other MIT students have pulled off similar hacks. In 2009, students placed a replica of the Apollo Lunar Module on top of the dome to celebrate the 40th anniversary of the moon landing. In 2006, a hack saw an MIT campus fire truck put on the dome just like the 1994 police car. And at number one, the Death Valley Tourists. It was October of 1996 when a park ranger was flying in a helicopter over California's Death Valley National Park. They were looking for illegal drug activity and spotted a 1996 Green Plymouth Voyager minivan. The park ranger landed their helicopter and were able to get a good look at the van. They quickly discovered that it was a rental it was covered with dust and it looked like it had been stuck in the sand. 
the park ranger then reached out to law enforcement. What they uncovered involved a family from Germany on vacation in California. They'd rented the van a few months earlier and never returned the car. The visitors also never returned to Germany. Where were they? What happened? It was a complete mystery that the authorities were stumped by. The missing individuals were Egbert Rimkus, age 34, and his 10-year-old son, George Weber. Joining Rimkus was his 27-year-old girlfriend, Cornelia Meyer, and her 4-year-old son, Max Meyer. They were originally from Dresden, Germany, and had landed in the United States on July 8th. That happened to be the same day they rented their van at LAX, the Los Angeles airport. Rimkus, Meyer, and the kids then drove to Las Vegas, and on July 22, 1996, they left Vegas and made their way to the Death Valley National Park. Death Valley just so happens to be the spot where the hottest temperature on Earth was measured. On July 10, 1913, the high reached 134 degrees Fahrenheit. When Rimkus and Meyer arrived with the children, the temperatures in the area had already reached between 115 to 120 degrees Fahrenheit. From Death Valley, the plan was to travel up to Yosemite National Park. Rimkus, Meyer, and the kids stopped by a visitor center at Death Valley to pick up an information booklet. They were camping in the park and made some plans to visit an area called Mengel Pass, which is a long dirt trail. They signed a guest booklet near the abandoned mine at the park and it noted that they were heading over the pass, which was probably referring to Mengel Pass. They also signed their names Connie, Egbert, George, and Max. This may have been the last place they stopped while visiting the area. When the van they were renting was discovered in October of 1996, park employees noticed that the tires were shredded while one tire was completely off the rim. It's believed that they tried driving the van for a certain distance before it was completely useless with the damaged tires. It was not the right vehicle to bring to that area with all of the rugged terrain and potholes. A car with four-wheel drive would have been the better choice. A beer bottle believed to be Rimkus or Myers was found about a quarter mile away from the van. Inside were empty water bottles and sleeping bags. Also in the van was an American flag. It had been taken from the Butte Valley Stone Cabin. It's a shelter that holds food and water. Rimkus, Meyer, and the kids had to have been there at some point. Alcohol and children's toys were still in the vehicle. There was even a spare tire and a jack in the van. Park employees were confused. What was really odd was that nothing was found in the van like a passport or ID, although they did find a credit card. Even the keys to the van were gone. A search for the missing German tourists was launched. Helicopters, horses, and a group of searchers looked for the missing people, but they found nothing after countless hours of searching. All they had was the van. Thirteen years went by with no good leads. Some theories were tossed out. Some thought the van was a staged scene by Rimkus and Meyer so they could start new lives in the United States or South America. Another theory is that they somehow found illegal drug activity and were taken out since they were witnesses and saw too much. It was 2009 when skeletal remains were finally spotted by hikers. A member of law enforcement told the press, At this point, it's being handled like a criminal investigation, but there is no evidence of foul play at this point. Meyer's passport and a bank ID was also found at the scene. Also discovered was a wine bottle and a journal written in German. What happened to Rimkus, Meyer, and the kids still a mystery. Perhaps they underestimated the remoteness of the region. It would have been a good idea for Rimkus and Meyer to let someone know where they were heading. The mystery of the German tourist still haunts Death Valley to this day. Who knows if their souls are still roaming in the desert? Thanks for watching. What do you think about these mysteries? Please share your thoughts in the comments below and be sure to subscribe. We'll see you next time. Bye for now.